Welcome to The Unpredictable. On this episode, we are going to talk about the power of our childhood voices and decisions and their effects on our lives. I'm hosting a brilliant writer, Seher Golshan. Seher is an award-winning writer and award-winning short film director. Her debut picture book, So Loud, is going to take its place on the shelves in a week. I had a chance to read this lovely book, and I truly like the story of the little kid, Rudy. It's a kid's book, but I believe that not only are the kids going to like this book, but also adult readers are going to take away something powerful, something strong from the story. Hello, Sahar. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. I'm so honored. So I really appreciate you are being with us because I really liked your book uh, and I have many questions about it. First of all, congrats on your book. This is your debut book. Uh, the story, the character of Ruda Be. Uh, am I Perfect. Yeah. Ruda Be. In short, Rudy. And the illustrations. Great work. Thank you. Congrats again. So let's start with this question. The name of your book is So Loud, and it tells a story of a little girl does everything a kid does. I mean, playing, singing, jumping, doing funny things, and some rascal things. <laughs> but the adults around Rudy always tell her that you're so loud, tone it down. So then she starts to question the sounds of the world she lives in, and uh, explore something very strong about her voice instead of getting totally silenced. At this point, this book tells something to adults as well. Could you please tell us about Rudy's journey specifically on this topic and the message of her choice to adults? Of course, thank you for that really close reading. Yeah, I always think about how kids' books are of course, geared towards children, but there's always a message for people of all ages. And in this story, Rudy is a girl who loves to talk. And not only does she love to talk, she likes to talk at a very high volume. So people around her comment and they say, Rudy, you're too loud. And even though she starts her journey loving her voice, slowly she feels kind of internalizes that shame that some of us experience as children for just being ourselves. And she starts to tone down or lower her voice slowly. And Rudy is special because she is a diasporic kid. She's growing up in, in the West, but her parents are immigrants. And it isn't until she meets her mom on Bozorg, her grandmother who comes to visit from Iran, um, that she sees this role model, this beautiful woman who has a very loud voice. And she also tells her a little bit about women in Iran who are known as uh, this term, which is shirzan, which means lion women. I think a lot of, in the Middle East, a lot of cultures, we, we have this uh, real archetype of women who are just so bold, badass, just really tell it as it is. And she learns about this story from her grandmother and slowly learns to reconnect with herself and celebrate her loudness. So it comes from kind of that idea of being too loud and actually celebrating yourself and saying, wow, I'm so loud, revering that loudness and its function in terms of calling out injustice. Perfect. So Rudy thinks her voice is like water or sometimes it's prisoned in a sealed water tap. But sometimes, I mean, after that questioning period, then it's like a river flows independently. This is so poetic, so strong. Can you tell the difference between having your voice prisoned in a sealed water tap and leaving your voice in a river to flow freely? Of course. So the conceit, the kind of neat thing is Rudy is her, her nickname that she goes by, but her full name is Rudabe, as you said. And so Rudabe actually means river. 
and she learns kind of about herself while learning about the, the, the true meaning of her, her name, which is River. And I think that sometimes we, Rudy included, we stifle our voices. We kind of try to sound pleasant for other people. Um, and we kind of control ourselves, uh, even as adults that start, starts in ch childhood, but it kind of continues into adulthood. And the idea of a river is just being yourself. Some people are quiet, some people are loud, some people are extroverted, some people are introverted. And the idea is a river flows naturally. It actually um, isn't just one thing. If you're at the top of a river, it might be very loud and disruptive <laughs> and have such a unique uh, sound. And then at the bottom of a river, there's like a peace, there's a lightness. Um, and so even though people around her tell her she's too loud, um, she knows that she can become this dynamic person who, depending on the circumstance, who she's with, whether she's with her friends or her family, her voice is always changing. Um, it's a river that uh, is not just one fixed thing. As I mentioned, it's it's so poetic. I mean, from being in a seal tap to uh, a, a river, being a river, it's so poetic, it's so strong. <laughs> So, Sarah, do you, do you think letting the people control your voice level, control your action types, and control your life somehow starts with your, with your childhood decisions? I mean, choosing to be a person like Rudy or choosing a life to obey all the instructions and orders that make you what you are not. Absolutely. I think that... Uh... It's very tempting, I think, to just uh, follow the instructions, as you say, of others to, especially for women and girls, to be polite, to be uh, always helping other people and uh, following their wishes. And I think there's a role of thinking of ourselves in a collective and not only thinking of ourselves, but I think that stifles creativity. I know you have a lot of writers on your podcast that stifles our expression, um, that stifles freedom and liberty, freedom of movement. Um, there's a lot of interest of governments, of people, uh, institutions in terms of keeping us silent. And we see this on a systemic level, but we also see this in, in the domestic level, right? In the way that girls and, and children overall are raised. So I think that there's a real need to celebrate children for who they are at a young age. I think that um, that would actually uh, result in a society that's more free um, and not as kind of caged or imprisoned, as you say. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that the book is more than about Rudy, but about all of our kind of agency and power as people. The difference between a uh, parent or uh, very close relative pressure and the politic pressure. Do you think parents, especially parents, do that pressure because of their culture by not knowing the effects of it? Uh, what, what can you tell to the families, to parents uh, about treating their children? Um, when they are using their voice or actions so loud? Yeah, I was just listening actually to a podcast. It was a CBC podcast, uh, Commotion. Like it's also a CBC radio show that is live every day. And someone was saying that um, when kids are loud, when they raise their voice, it means they're learning. Wow. And yeah. <laughs> and, That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Rudy in the story loves to read and she loves stories, right? And so I would, even though I'm not a parent, um, I there's some parents around me, I would suggest, and maybe I'll have even more wisdom if I ever become a parent, just for parents to be more curious about why their kids are loud. Maybe they're really excited about being alive, but also about spring about nature about stories about their friendships and uh to not think of loudness only as a disruption it can be a good disruption when we think on a more political level that we were talking about where certain voices call out injustice 
Um, but I think it's also just an expression of joy, an expression of learning, as I heard. Um, and to kind of think about how sometimes when we're telling someone to mute themselves or bring themselves down, um, sometimes we're actually challenging the essence of who they are. So Rudy in the in the book, she has a, a neighbor downstairs who is actually a husky dog. Yes. <laughs> and huskies, uh, they're originally wolves, right? They come from uh, this wild species. And so they howl. They're like constantly going, oh. <laughs> and so I think of Rudy as maybe not a husky, but someone who has this essence of her of just wanting to be this bright, loud person. And sometimes I think when we get the feedback from parents or teachers or uncles and aunts, um, there's a notion of being who we are is just wrong. And I want to send a message to parents and also kids who can maybe show this to their parents, maybe through the book, that um, there's nothing wrong with being who you are. And there's a certain vitality in just celebrating your identities, your personality, your sensibilities. Perfect. I mean, you underlying very really important points because as you know in some countries in in some cultures being quiet is seriously being promoted by especially adults i mean if you are a quiet and silenced kid yes then you are a good kid but uh, it doesn't work like that in life yeah, yeah so and your book shows that reality very well Seher, Rudy is a member of an immigrant family, as you mentioned, who lives in Canada. So this book has a multicultural story as well. And everyone is going to see that. Even some words, they're they going to uh, hear and learn some uh, Persian words in it. That They are so lovely words. Especially, I like Baba. <laughs> so what can you tell us about being an immigrant? and having this specific experience, depending on what Rudy goes through in this story. Because as we talked, this culture mostly comes from that country they came from. So how this situation affects those kids? What do you think about it? Yeah, I also love Baba. Baba is also how you say dad in Turkish. Yes, yeah. that's okay, why I love Baba. so love, yeah. love the song yeah. in my ear. It's so nostalgic. Um, I also love that Baba has all this yeah. hair that we have in the <laughs> Middle East. He like is proud yes. of all his hair. So the book um, obviously has uh, a child who has two immigrant parents. And I actually wanted to really intentionally show this because... When I was growing up, I didn't see a lot of so-called multicultural diverse families in the books that I read. Sometimes I saw um, mixed children where um, there would be one uh, racialized kid and then one white parent, which is a really important family to show. But I never saw an uh, immigrant family where both parents were from different cultures and were both racialized. So Rudy has um, a father who's from Iran and a mother who's Chinese. And I really wanted to, sh to show that on the page because in this city, in this country, there are people who um, are from all over. And I think it was really important to have that representation um, where I think it's a very unique experience for a child to be a child of immigrants from two different cultures, not just to be um, Canadian and, and let's say Iranian. And yeah, Rudy, I think she learns about who she is as this loud girl at the same time where she's learning about her identity as an Iranian girl, an Iranian Chinese girl. And specifically, um, she learns so much of this cultural sort of uh, expression from her grandmother. Um, often uh, immigrant parents are working all the time. You'd, you'd see in my documentary, my father was a taxi driver, yes. driving instructor. Um, they're really, really kind of focused as they should be on surviving and settling in a new place. And often grandparents um, who might come to visit or might live with the child are almost these cultural transmitters. So I wanted to show how it's really important for kids who might grow up outside of their cultures, thousands of miles and kilometers away from their cultures, how they're able to learn about themselves. And it was really intentional that I included some Persian words um, like baba, 
like Maman Bozorg, like Sabze, um, in the text. It was very intentional. There's a strong relationship, strong tie between having your voice at its real level and having your character at its real level. I mean, are those connected, do you think? Yeah, I think that uh, it obviously it's a children's book, but I also relate to it as an adult around mm -hmm. this idea of uh, kind of changing ourselves based on the circumstance we're in or changing ourselves based on the instructions or the obedience that we've received, even as children that we've internalized now as we walk the earth as adults. And um volume obviously it's literal because Rudy has a very loud voice yes. <laughs> but it's also a metaphor of um just not like hiding ourselves not um feeling like we need to um diminish our light as well or be rigid when you think of the river the river flows it mm -hmm. has a natural current um and I think of when we put turn down the volume on our character we're becoming rigid or dry. Um, and so all of these uh, kind of metaphors are really important in terms of just being, letting us be and celebrating who we are in the world. Um, there are sometimes you talked about the immigrant experience, even as a kid growing up, I was born in Canada, um, just kind of not celebrating who I was as, as this kind of mixed race immigrant kid. Um, there's so many facets we can talk about, even beyond volume. Volume almost is like a metaphor or, or a window or a portal mm -hmm. to talk about all the ways that um, we can show up and take space. So, Sahar, when is your uh, book launch day? Yeah, it's coming could, up could, so yeah. soon. So, so soon? Could yes. you please give us the information about it? So the book comes out March 19th which okay. is the first day of spring and the day that no Ruz is celebrated, mm -hmm. the Iranian New Year, which is actually a, a new year for many people around the world besides Iran. And the launch, there's going to be a big party, a no Ruz celebration. It's going to take place on March 24th um, at CSI Annex at 4 p.m. So it's very soon. It's all around the corner and intentional in terms of this idea of spring and vitality, mm -hmm. which matches Rudy's voice. Yeah, perfect, perfect combination. And uh, dear listeners, you're going to see something really interesting and lovely about Nauru's in the book. <laughs> you, you're going to see that and remember the, these words. So, uh, Seher, now I would like to ask a question about your short movie. Because I saw it on your website. That movie is named Car. Uh, and w what was the meaning of it it was yeah, work, right it, in, yes exactly or, there's a similar word in turkish perhaps no no, no it's different no. what is work in different. turkish ish ish, ish. okay ish, ish. ish. Yes. okay yes. yeah so and you received the air canada short film award with this movie it's available on your website so i'm not going to give a spoiler dear listeners have a look at it but you're reading a poem at the end of the movie, this movie tells a story about your father, your father's life as an immigrant in Canada. So you are reading a poem at the end of the movie to your father. I truly liked it. It's so touchy. Uh, if you have the poem around you now, could you please read a part of it for us? And then could you please tell the story of the poem? Of course. So like the film, which is called Car, there's a lot of wordplay because car means, of course, a vehicle, but also mm -hmm. work. And I like to play with words. I'm a big wordplay writer. Mm -hmm. And so this poem is called Three. Um, and three is actually, um, it means, it, it's, it's half of my name, right? Sahar. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a wordplay around my name. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> I'll read a little nice. part of it. Thank you for the invitation. Wow. One step to the left of my smile is a dimple, and on the opposite end are two more. I am told that it is a rarity for three tiny caves to be etched into a face, little containers collecting words shared softly, not meant to be heard 
by the outside world. My father became a father three years after migrating to Canada. He chose Sahar, a girl's name from Iran, meaning dawn, so that my night could become Sahar. Wow, perfect. Masterfully. <laughs> <laughs> so I am wondering if uh, your father uh, let his <laughs> tears roll down on his face. Yeah, for sure. The um, Filming the documentary was really intense. Like it was two days of constant filming. Mm -hmm. So I think the emotions maybe didn't come out in that production phase. Yeah. But um, even though the film was uh, first uh, released in 2019, mm -hmm. as recent as last year, there have been some screenings. There was a screening at the Cineplex Odeon in Scarborough, which is a mall mm -hmm. in Scarborough uh, that I went to as a kid. And he was at the screening and some friends were sitting nearby him and they said that they saw him crying. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, there is definitely a sense of like being moved. I think the film is about maybe someone who isn't typically on screen, like someone who whose job isn't as revered by society as maybe a doctor or a lawyer, um, but about kind of a an everyday person who deserves to be in the archive of stories. And I think it was special for him to to be portrayed in a film and, and to have his story told in a certain way. Yeah, great. It, it's a great work, like your book. Thank Perfect. you. Let's talk about your language learner side, because there's an info in your bio like that, language learner. So how many languages can you speak? I believe many. <laughs> so <laughs> what's your specific way to learn many languages? Yeah, I speak, uh, I would say it varies depending on where I am in life. Because if I'm practicing more if I'm, or have the opportunity to speak to more native speakers, but right now, I, I speak five languages wow. <laughs> in the current day, uh, 2024, March. Mm -hmm. um, the first language, of course, is the one we're speaking, English, mm -hmm. uh, French. I grew up in Canada and went to a French immersion public mm -hmm. school. Um, I speak Spanish because I've had the opportunity to work a little bit in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And my 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 native languages, my heritage languages, which are Persian, which you find yes. in in the book <laughs> in So Loud, but also my mother tongue, which is Deju, a dialect of Chinese, and wow. various methods. I think um, the unconventional one that maybe not people out here is like just. Uh, being nosy a little bit like overhearing people <laughs> like I remember when I was learning Spanish um I would go to like church I'm not um Christian but I wanted to just hear people speak mm -hmm. <laughs> um so like going to unconventional places and like listening to, to native speakers speak and and be passionate um I also tried to journal so I didn't grow mm -hmm. up speaking Persian I learned as an adult at U of T at University of Toronto when I was an undergraduate and continued to take courses at the university over the last decade. But something I try to do because it's not my my most dominant language is I journal in Persian. So I'll wake up and I'll, I might journal a little bit in English, but I'll also try to journal in Persian. And the reason it's a good language learning method is because you're using everyday words, right? You're like, today yeah. I went to the store and you're like, mm -hmm. I'll need to say that to someone and <laughs> when I talk to them, right? So you're you're like reviewing really common phrases and you're also talking about feeling and everyday uh, sort of living. Um, and it kind of helps you have like a, a, I think the goal for me is always to be like really strong in conversation. I don't, I don't think I have an academic level in every language that I speak, but to really kind of hone on conversation. So. Mm -hmm being being nosy listening overhearing conversations and going to spaces where you can do that and also journaling are my main uh techniques so here is my last question what is the unpredictable thing in your life you would never forget about it and how did you deal with it could you please share with us yeah i uh i have one that's related to writing actually <laughs> Um, it's maybe not as dramatic uh, as far as I think of like a big culminating climax in a novel or a film. Um, but I, even though I have 
this picture book that's coming out next week, um, I'm actually first and foremost, as a writer, a memoirist. So I've written really personal stories and I have this manuscript for a memoir. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that I would debut as a writer in memoir and okay. <laughs> in adult writing, that I would have this big, you know, picture books are like wide <laughs> and more thin, I would say, because there's less pages. And then mm -hmm. adult books are kind of like long and thick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my prediction for my my career would be that I would be a memoirist. And I'd have this this story out and that would be how I would debut as a writer. But unpredictably, um, I've debuted as a picture book writer. Yes. <laughs> and I think the reason it's unpredictable or unexpected for me is I think I maybe had um, an uninformed lens about what picture book writing was. I was like some friends who are picture book writers tell me like when they tell people they're picture book writers that they say, oh, that's cute. That's nice. <laughs> but I've learned that it's such a, a sophisticated um time intensive craft to write for kids and to write even what might seem like a deceptively simple quote unquote story. Um, so my unpredictable story is just related to my career. And, you know, you have a certain idea, you think you're this kind of artist, you think this you're kind of this writer. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be this serious memoirist. And I think <laughs> I will be one day, but I found all this joy mm -hmm. and play and experimentation in the children's book realm where um, I've written this book so loud. So that's my unpredictable. You have one plan in life and mm -hmm. then there's a secret yeah. change or shift. And for me, it's just a different medium that brings me a lot of joy. Yeah, but you never know. Maybe this is the best for you. Yeah, maybe, you maybe I, because... I've caught the bug. Maybe I'm going to have a career as a picture book writer. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? I'm sure you're going to publish that memoir as well in time. But this book is seriously not only a kid's book. I believe that it's it has a strong story in it. So uh, I would like to congrats you again. Thank you. On your debut book. And thank you very much for this beautiful conversation, Sahar. And thank you for this lovely book and good luck on it. Thank you. I've really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you, Sahar. Dear listeners, now it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode and please don't forget to like and share this episode. <laughs>